shifting gears, and I appreciate your insight with that. Um, playoffs with the NBA Finals, I think you had mentioned on um, you know, a radio interview with ESPN, but uh, one of the things you were impressed with in game one was just how the Lakers defended Rajon Rondo. What, what part of their effort in that did, did you like the most? Well, I, th I think there were a couple of factors there. First of all, I don't think Rajan was as aggressive as he needs to be. Uh, part of that is the fact that the Celtics got beaten badly at their defensive board. Uh, Rondo is the best in the business in the open court. Uh, when you're taking the ball out of the net and the Lakers shot better than 50% and you're getting beaten on the board, Lakers had a 16 to nothing advantage in second chance points. Uh, your opportunities to get to the open court are very much limited. And that's a big part of Rondo's game and it's a big part, has to be a big part of the Celtics game if they hope to win this series. So uh, if Rondo is just getting the ball and taking his team up into a half court set, uh, the Celtics are not going to have much success in this series. So they need to get Rondo in the open court, and to do that, they need to rebound the defensive board better, a whole lot better, and then let him create plays for himself and his teammates. Um, but I, I talked to him yesterday, and I suggested that he needs to be more aggressive, and he said he will be. So I think you'll see a different Rondo. Um, it's much easier to defend him if every time he has the ball, it's in a half court situation. He has his defender and the other, especially the Laker big men. They're all very conscious of him and they are not committing to him totally as he penetrates. He did get some penetrations. Rondo's numbers were not bad. He had 13 points, he had eight assists, only two turnovers. Uh, he, had, he was their second leading rebounder with six rebounds, four at the offensive board. So it wasn't as if he had a zero game, but it's not the game that the Celtics need from him if they're going to be successful. So I would, um, I would think the, like, the Celtics are going to make an effort, uh, a strong physical effort from their big men. Now at the half, Kevin Garnett had one rebound. Um, Paul Pierce is their leading rebounder for the game and Rondo is second. Pierce had nine and Rondo had six. Uh, that's not going to get it done. So I think you'll see a, a more intensity from the Celtic big men. Uh, if they don't come up with that, they can't win. And this could be a quick series. But I suspect that they will. Uh, in the playoffs, over the years, I have found that too much attention is given to the, pre the game just played. And, uh, you know, the Lakers, because the Laker fans, Laker coaches and players know better, but because they won game one as convincingly that they did, their fans are all thinking sweep. Well, you know, they, their fans thought that in the Phoenix series when the Lakers were successful and uh, played very well in the first two games in LA. And then they found themselves with two defeats in the first two games played in Phoenix. And in game five, one that went right down to the buzzer. So uh, a lot of games to be played. I think you'll see a different Celtic team and then it will depend on what the Lakers can do to combat that change in their game. Right. And with what you just said, with some of the, the anticipated changes you perceive Boston trying to make, how do the Lakers adjust to that match? Well, um, you know, we're talking a lot about uh, intensity and effort. Uh, there are no diagrams to cover that, you know. Um, a lot was made of the matchup between Garnett and Gasol before game one. Uh, Gasol clearly won the battle in that game. Uh, knowing Kevin Garnett as I have over the years, he's a very competitive guy. Uh, he will beat himself up badly for his game one. He will come out and play furiously 
in game two. Now, uh, he is not the same Kevin Garnett that he was in 2008 when he dominated Gasol. But uh, they, need, they need a bigger game from KG. Um, they need a, a more effective game from Perkins. You know, they, they both have to rebound. Uh, Glenn Davis has to be a rebounder. Uh, Rashid Wallace has to be a rebounder. And the other players have to be conscious of the board as well. I think rebounding, before the series began, I, I asked Doc Rivers what the key element of the series would be, and he said rebounding right away. Um, and that's it. Um, you can talk about, um, you know, blocking out and helping from the weak side and all those things. That, that's, that, that's a given. So you have to assume that's going to happen and the players have to make that happen. Um, Celtics just played, I thought, a very lackadaisical game. Um, surprising to me that in game one of the finals that would happen, but it did. So you brush it aside and go back to what you have to do to win. As far as uh, Kobe's playoff performance this season, the numbers have shown that 10 of the past 12 games scored at least 30 points, which seem to correlate, at least from a timeline perspective, the flu that he got during that was right knee. How would you compare his postseason performance this year compared to the other years? Well, Kobe, Kobe has always been a big game performer. And uh, he has taken it to another level this season. Uh, he has become, in my mind, the best closer in the history of the game. Um, there, Michael Jordan was great knocking down key shots. Kobe knocks down the shot to win the game, but prior to that, he's knocked down maybe four or five others that his team needed to have to hang in the game, uh, to recover from a 10-point deficit in the closing minutes of the game. I think he's been superb. He's uh, an incredibly um, focused defender, uh, and, uh, and an unbelievably tough competitor. Uh, he's a team player, but that doesn't prevent him from taking big shots or creating shots on his own if he thinks that's necessary for the team to win. Uh, I don't see in Kobe, and never did, the idea that I've got to get my points. I don't think that's in his mind at all unless he feels that the points are necessary for his teams to win. And um, I've talked to Kobe over the years many, many times, um, asking him, uh, because I've seen him start some games, he won't even take a shot the first period. And um, after the game, I'll say, you know, what was that about? Well, I wanted to get the big guys involved early, or wanted to get a certain player off and get him some shots early. He said, I can get mine anytime. And he can. You know, you can't stop him one on one. Lastly, what else are you looking forward to in game two as far as any X factors or anything else that well, would be instrumental? Um, I, I, I fully expect that the Celtics are going to come out much more focused. And that changes the game right away. Uh, the Lakers need to, I thought the Lakers came out great. And not just the starting guys, not just the bigs. Uh, Fisher and, and Kobe were very good right from the start. Um, can they duplicate that? You know, it's, it's a, you know, it's an assumption, I, th I think, from many casual observers that teams are going to come out and play at a high level. It's, it's everybody's going to come out at a particular level and play hard. Uh, can you play at the ultimate level? Uh, and I think that's what the, the Lakers have to do that. The same way they started game one. 
if they can, then it's up to the Celtics to not just match that, but eclipse that. Because the Celtics have to be the dominant team in game two if they're going to win.